let me quickly jump into an introduction about Sunil Shank uh, Shankaran Vishwanathan, who was born in January, sorry, November 26, 1979 in Madurai. Sunil is a versatile personality who has done many roles in the cricketing fraternity and still continues to do so. To start with, he is a former under India Under-19 and Ranji Trophy cricketer from Tamil Nadu, South India, who has shared the dressing rooms with Indian Trust cricketers like Mohammad Kaif, Yuvraj Singh, Lakshmi Pati Balaji and S. Badrinath. He is one of the very few cricketers who are privileged to captain their sides, to captain their straight sides in all the junior age group categories, which is a fantastic achievement for any cricketer in the world. He is also a certified sports administrator with an MBA in marketing management. Sunil, is one, uh, Sunil also is one of the members of the junior selection committee of the Tamil Nadu Cricket Association and also loves spending time coaching and mentoring creators and teams. Coach Sunil, as he is fondly known among children, firmly believes in the ideology of let the game teach the game, which I feel is a fantastic approach to coach any youngster. Currently, he is pursuing his passion for sports as the head of sports for the Omega International School, Chennai. On a personal note, I have known Sunil for the past 15 years and I have always admired the way he presented himself as a cricketer and as an individual. I've also had the pleasure to attend to a number of his meticulously presented speeches on sports management and psychology. I hope, I really hope, the 60 minutes organized by Cricket Social will throw valuable insights which will be helpful for all the cricketers who have tuned in today. Thank you very much for joining in and over to you, Sunil. Hi, Vipin. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, good morning for everyone who have connected in from the US. Good evening for all the folks who have joined in from uh, Middle East and India. Thanks to uh, Cricket Social for this wonderful opportunity to interact. Uh, before we start, I would like to say the intent of uh, uh, this interaction is to share experiences and learning. You know, learning is sometimes what to do and a lot of times what not to do. So uh, we uh, sincerely hope that uh, uh, whatever we have learned through the years is going to benefit uh, all the watchers and uh, you can sometimes learn, as I said, what to do and what not to do. Uh, uh, you would have, uh, once you've registered, you would have seen on the uh, landing page, we have a very clear and definite uh, topics of discussion today. The first part of it is uh, going to be the off-season preparation. The second part is the pre-season approach. And the third part is the in-season insights. So uh, before I start, I would like to say we would uh, throw some light upon each of the topics. And once we finish topic one, for example, off-season preparation, uh, uh, I suggest that we can quickly take some questions so that the questions needn't have to pile up all the way till the end. So for those of you watching, if you have any questions, you can start uh, shooting them uh, as the discussion progresses in the Q&A section and uh, we will address them. If in case for want of time, you're not able to answer your questions, please email us at info at cricketsocial.com and we will ensure that we come back to you with the best information for your queries and clarification. So let's get started with uh, off-season preparation. Uh, off -season to define it as a time frame could be basically two months, one and a half months, or three months, as may be the case into uh, winter, or sometimes it can be a monsoon break where the fresh season starts afterwards. So typically for a generic definition, off-season preparation could be anywhere between three months to uh, one and a half at max, right? Um, and the first and important part of an off-season preparation would be the screening, physical screening, attending to our physical injuries, niggles and discomfort. We all are human beings, we're not machines, so we have a lot of wear and tear uh, in the sport and it's very common to have niggles and discomfort. The first point for all the semi-professional and uh, youth cricketers watching if there is any specific area which is primarily or recurringly giving you discomfort and pain, those are something that you cannot avoid. Okay, And we seriously advocate 
do not do self diagnosis and don't go based on your assumptions okay we definitely request you to take professional help well professional help uh, i we mean uh, reaching out to a sports physiotherapist or a sports medicine doctor if you have access to one or a generic even an orthopedic uh, doctor would help uh, why because sometimes we might assume that the pain is caused due to a specific reason believe me more often than not that might not be the reason let me give you an example we play cricket and having a finger or an impact injury is very very common so this has happened to me so i get hit on a finger with the ball so this is the point of contact however what it leads to is a concussion in my elbows or forearms right so it is not enough if i'm going to manage only my impact point of impact so there's no use me just i think this part up this portion where the concussion has resulted due to the impact has to be released and some treatment has to be done for this to work better right i didn't know this until i uh, went and met a physio so why do we need to take uh, professional help is because any injury any discomfort we need to get rid of them early and get back into action with as trouble free body as we can again carrying niggles is very very common nobody in that sense can be 100% fit right but the best is to get rid of all our discomfort injuries during this time and another interesting common uh, injury that i would like to discuss is the back right so very common to see cricketers having sore back or stiff back uh, during practice or during competitions during games after batting bowling or even sometimes fielding and we assume that there's something wrong with the back and we go on doing our stretches and uh, you know self diagnosis types so please avoid that again we are giving a very very personal experience here Uh, i had this back spasm problem so i was wondering you know something is wrong with my lower back all the time but to my horror when i went to a physio a sports physio i realized that there is a spasm actually in my lower abs right because of this spasm the opposite muscle group which is the lower back was suffering the pain or the stiffness and soreness so technically it had nothing to do with my back right so again a humble request half season is the great time is a great time for you to get your body screen okay attend to your niggles injuries any specific discomforts seek professional help and get 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 into the best possible version of you that's with regards to the physical attributes and injuries another common uh, issues which is faced by cricketers at all level believe me even at the highest level the professional cricketers uh the semi professionals or the amateurs or the youth cricketers is cramping right a lot of us had this issues of uh, cramping and uh, through our cricketing colleagues we have heard that uh, uh, sachin uh, as an example for cramps you know he used to have cramping and he was such a professional that he used to keep uh, alarms overnight wake up and hydrate himself for the competition for the game so cramps technically happens because of lack of fluids in the body and hydration please hear this out carefully hydration is just not during the competition so hydration is before during and after the competition so uh, again a personal experience i used to cramp a bit so i was a left handed batsman and uh, my game was to i was a grafter so i had to bat long we played days game so for me to get the big hundreds i had to bat long like a day and a half or sometimes a day uh, and invariably i used to cramp at my 70s and 80s which obviously we don't want as a batsman so then a physio advised me that uh, i take electrolytes the previous evening of the game right you know something like uh, uh, having it uh, uh, in the evening before the game like a 500 ml or a liter of electrolytes and keep sipping it right through the evening and top it up with a lot of hydration uh, during the night so and believe that worked really well for me it did uh, prevent and uh, reduce the cramping for me ultimately small things like this will add up to our performance right so that is why we start off with our physical body attending to physical injuries discomforts 
and cramping issues. So each of us can have our own uh, issues. Some of us probably after playing will have uh, uh, pain in the heel. You know, some of us probably because of our throwing might have uh, pain in the biceps or uh, the shoulders. So please ensure that during the off season, the key, the first area of preparation is your body because ultimately we need to look after our body for a prolonged uh, career and to enjoy our uh, cricket for a longer duration. So that's with regards to the first aspect of uh, off-season preparation. The next is uh, uh, reflection. So reflection is a lot of uh, mental exercise that we need to do. The first part, we saw the physical part where we need to start off knowing our physical body and get the better of it. The next part is the mental aspect, reflection. For uh, some of the young kids who are watching, who might ask, uh, what is reflection? Reflection is basically an analysis that uh, as a player uh, we need to do both as individuals and it's also good to do it collectively as a team about the season that just got completed. Or for those of you who didn't get to play a lot in the previous season can probably combine two seasons together and then get going on the uh, reflection. Okay, so what reflection is nothing but simple analysis as individuals we try to understand what went right, what could have gone better, what didn't go well for us. The next part of uh, reflection is why, why do we need to do reflection? See, analysis, uh, data, these are all the words that we commonly hear in all aspects of the current world. Cricket is no different. Uh, the way we need to operate our uh, cricketing skills is we need to retain our strength and we need to cut down on the weaknesses. So for that, we need to do both. We need to know both. So what is my strength as an individual or what is our strength as a team? What are the weaknesses that we need to cut down on? So this process of analyzing is what we refer to as a reflection. And uh, let me throw some more light, dividing it, you know, basis the role. So if you are a batter, what type of uh, uh, reflections can you do? If you are a pacer, what can you do? And if you are a spinner, what you can do? So if you are a batter, right, it's good to have a breakup of each of your innings. Uh, in today's world, luckily we have amazing tools like Cricket Social where your data for a particular game is available at the click of a button. Right Back in the day when I was playing, we didn't have such amazing tools. So we went the traditional way of having a logbook, like a diary and making a note. So if you are a young batter or if you are a semi-professional or even a professional, how can you have a breakup of your innings? So simply uh, the information that you need to key in or capture would be your uh, the duration that you played, the minutes that you batted in that specific innings, the breakup of dot balls, the singles, the twos and the fours and sixes, the mode of dismissal. Okay. So like you got out LBW, don't say just LBW, you got to say LBW left arm spinner bowling around the wickets. Believe me, the more we capture, at the end of it all, it will give us a pattern. It's going to immensely benefit us, understand about ourselves. Cricket is a journey where we get to know more about ourselves as a batter, as a bowler, whatever the case may be. So, for a bowler, what kind of uh, data would we require, you know, to do some kind of reflection? A is the number of spells. Again, uh, on tools like Cricket Social, you have the all the details listed out like overs, maidens, runs, wickets, extras uh, uh, that you have conceded. And uh, some qualitative uh, data also needs to be uh, captured and maintained, which would be the number of balls, number of spells that you have bowled. So was it two spells or was it three spells across the 10 overs? Or sometimes you're playing a T20, four overs, did you bowl across two spells or was it one spell? And the situation during the spells which could be like, you know, start of the innings in the power play with the new ball or in the middle overs or was it in the fag end, which is the slog overs, referred to as the slog overs. So these are uh, areas that as a batter, as a bowler, you need to capture some of the information, both quantitative and qualitative. So at the end of the season, if you just go through, you will find a pattern. Again, let me give some uh, personal example here. So uh, I religiously used to do the reflection part and uh, one of the seasons I realized that early on, I was a left-handed batsman, early on I was getting caught at second slip, you know, for a pacer initially I was getting out 
So sometimes it will miss the eye during the season. I'm not saying save the reflection only for the uh, off season, but do a very elaborate and detailed one in the off season. But be smart in constantly analyzing how your uh, games are progressing because so this pattern might slip away from the eyes during the season. So I'm going to give you examples of what I could understand in the reflections done in the off season preparation. So then I realized once a season I was getting out in second step, so I was probably chasing balls way outside of them that initially I was better off leaving. That's one good inference I got. Another interesting inference is for a left arm spinner. I'm a left handed batsman, I was left arm spinner bowling around the wickets for me, wide of the crease. I was getting out carded slip. So uh, then I had to think and figure out, analyze why this was happening. Then I realized because of the angle created by the bowler, I was trying to play at the balls, assuming that it's going to turn. So what was the corrective measure that I could come up with because of the analysis is, okay, I need to start playing for the straighter one because once I assume the straighter one, I will have the tendency to leave the ball if it's away. And even if it's going to spin, it is pitching outside the off, it's going to be harmless for me. Now, unless and until I know that this was happening, I wouldn't have thought of a solution. So reflection technically has two parts to it. One is analyzing and also trying to come up with a plan or a solution to the findings that we arrive at. Okay, and on a humorous note, one session, uh, one season I was getting out, run out uh, quite a few occasions. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we all know it's, a, it's criminal as a batter to get run out, to kind of throw your wicket. Uh, so my friends were actually pulling my leg, my teammates saying that, you know, might you got to turn your motor off. You know, uh, that kind of hit me and I realized I was overtly eager, you know, to rotate the strike, sometimes to go to the non strikers end or sometimes to get on strike. So uh, these are simple things, but very, very useful tools, uh, a reflection and analysis and to back it up with some plan to counter our findings. So uh, that's the second part of uh, uh, the off-season training, which uh, we I strongly recommend that uh, all the cricketers spend some time in understanding us because as I said, it's a journey. The more we play, the more we know about ourselves as a batter, as a bowler. And collectively as a team, also you can think through what are the situations that you, the, you as a group, as a team did well, what are the situations you didn't do well and what are the situations that you could do better. So uh, that's some light on the reflection part. So we covered the physical part in the off-season preparation first up, followed by the mental aspect of analysis and uh, uh, trying to reach at a, a solution or an uh, option or a plan for the findings. And the next part is uh, functional activities, which is extremely relevant to the current day scenario because a lot of us unfortunately are in quarantine due to the COVID-19 outbreak. So uh, the functional activities are very, very critical. It's very easy to say, you know, this is not actual cricket. You know, I need to get out and go out in the park or go out in the nets and uh, have a hit. Yes, we all want to do that. But until such time, what is the best that I can do to keep myself in the best possible shape as a cricketer? So, as a cricketer, don't look at cricket just as skill and technique. That's only one aspect of the game. So, you look at it holistically. You know, everything that you do, your strength and conditioning, your hydration, your nutrition, your recovery, everything matters. Everything contributes to our performance and success on the field. So some of the functional activities that we all can do as cricketers, spend 20, 30 minutes, that's more than sufficient to stay in shape, right? So I would like to say skipping jump rope is extremely vital. Uh, it has to be an integral part of your kit bag. So please ensure that you can do a lot of skipping around in the house. You, you just need a small area, basically. And if you have some wall access, you can do a whole bunch of things within uh, the four walls. You can do planks, the core stability, which is the powerhouse of the body. It generates the energy for us. So working on the planks, core stability, body balance. Balance is extremely essential as a batter, as a bowler, as a fielder in cricket. Okay, and the flexibility. I don't forget flexibility. It handles the uh, major muscle group and it helps us in the longevity uh, of our body and also us playing the game for a, a longer time. So we can do a lot of things at home so i suggest 
uh, that uh, whatever you have at home, you know, a small area, only one tennis ball, even a plastic bat, just make the most of what you have. Uh, spend 20, 30 minutes to uh, do a lot of functional activities. And please look at a holistic picture, like strength and conditioning could simply be doing some push-ups, doing some squats, or doing a step run if you have a staircase. You know, again, core stability. So these are small things, but believe me, Every day you keep doing one aspect of it, it's going to keep it interesting and it's also going to help you stay in shape. So uh, that's the third part. Uh, to sum up the off-season uh, preparation, we looked at the physical component, the injuries, the discomfort. The second part is the mental analysis, which is the reflection. What, why and uh, how can a batter do his reflection? How can a bowler do his reflection? And the third is uh, functional activities with relevance to the current scenarios. What are the activities that we could do at home? So with that, we come to the end of uh, the first segment of our discussion. And I think we can take some questions on the first aspect. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you, Sunil, for explaining the first topic of season preparation. Uh, We've got a couple of interesting questions from Mr. Arun and Mr. Naresh Kohli, and both are of the same topic. They want to know, as an all-rounder, how should an all-rounder approach his off-season preparation? Mr. Arun is uh, very specific about his workload, that a workload, I mean physical or mental workload, and Mr. Naresh Kohli is it's very specific on what will be the physical preparation of an all-rounder. So, can you please explain? Sure. So, all rounders, um, the good news is you are the most sought after breed in the current cricket, contemporary cricket. Because, believe me, uh, most cricketers in today's world have to be all rounders. All rounders, I mean, cricket has become multi dimensional. So, being an excellent fielder is non negotiable in today's cricketing world and scenario. Okay. And you have, if you are a good batsman, you have to be a decent bowler. Okay, so being a great fielder or an uh, excellent fielder is non-negotiable. So if you are a good bowler, you have to be a decent batter. So in that sense, Arun and uh, uh, Naresh, we all are all-rounders. But specifically, I know how many of you would have seen some of the workout videos or the training sessions of Ben Stokes, you know. He's probably one of the top-notch all-rounders in the world today. So by just having a look at it, you know he, this guy works probably doubly hard than the rest of the pack. Right, so ensure that as all rounders, there is a tremendous load on you. So you got to work extra. So if like the batters and bowlers are going to work half an hour a day, uh, the bad news is you probably have to double it up and work an hour a day. But having said that, it's tremendous utility and it is the most sought after breed in the current world. I, I would say probably across the years, uh, 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 we always relish having uh, all-rounders in whatever format or whatever category uh, that a team's playing. Thank you, Sunil, for that. I've got one more question. We'll take one more quick question from Aditya Krishna. Uh, Aditya asks, how important is mental preparation towards a game during the off-season? How uh, important is mental preparation towards the game during the off-season? It is, it is always critical. Uh, I'm sure we all have heard this terminology, cricket is played between the two years, right? It's a very common uh, adage that we would have heard from coaches or uh, from the cricket enthusiasts. But having said that, uh, uh, the off-season, the reflection, the analytical part, that's again, as we mentioned, is a key component and that is the mental aspect, right? So you think a lot about what is your game? You know, what, did, uh, what are you doing right? What are the areas that we need to improve? That again is a mental activity. So we have to condition ourselves to think. See, because at the end of the day, everybody is going there to play well. Every, nobody goes there out to fail. Everybody wants to do well. Everybody wants to win the game. You as well as 11 other guys in the opponent. So what is more important is the willingness to prepare and the smartness to think. Okay, remember this willingness to prepare for your win and this smartness to think for your win. So the mental aspect is, you know, it's it doesn't matter whether uh, it is off-season or pre-season or during-season. 
it's perennial that as much as we work on the physical part we need to emphasize on the mental part we need to constantly think about ourselves you know as individuals and also as a group as a team okay. can we take one more question or do we move on uh, uh, how many one, more questions do we uh, have I've a bunch got, or uh, i have got one more question yeah we can take it really quick before we yeah. go into okay. the next this is from neeraj ravi kumar he says what should be your preparation during the off season when coming back from an injury well injury is uh, a lot of it tests you in many ways not just physically so the key is to keep reassuring yourself you know that yes i'm going to come out of this and i'm going to get into my shape that kind of positive reassurance has to be done forget what everybody else is saying yes it's always good to have a uh, uh, support staff or uh, a support team in the sense who are constantly working on you who are constantly trying to help you not only the specialists like the sports doctors and the physiotherapists and the masseurs and the trainers i mean friends and your own family who constantly encourage you positively saying that yes buddy you got to do this and you're going to come back even more stronger so the belief first the self belief that yes i am going to work hard i am going to come back to my best okay it's never easy to come back from an injury uh, especially if you are a, a pacer you are prone to a lot of injuries and uh, you have seen a lot of success stories globally as well like look at lakshmi pradi balaji brett lee the olden days it was dennis lilly they all had career threatening injuries but they constantly worked 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 back themselves believed themselves and eventually they could make a comeback so the key i would say is setting aside the physical part is your belief the constant belief that yes i'm going to work hard and i'm going to come back stronger that's extremely important whenever you are coming back from an injury thank you sunil for answering all the questions so we will move on to the next topic which is yep. a pre season approach thanks thanks vipin so i hope uh, 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 you got some insights on the pre season again uh, sorry the uh, after season uh, what i would like to re emphasize again is we are trying to provide a lot of insights and ideas right which are generic and out of our experience so you don't have to commit or reinvent the wheel you can always learn from others mistakes smartly and if you have any specific questions very very specific to your game you want to know please email us at info@cricketsocial.com and we will do our best to come back with a suggestion or a solution having said that let's uh, progress to the uh, second segment uh, of the evening which is the pre season approach so let me define uh, we said we define the uh, uh, the earlier segment as uh, a duration of anywhere between 3 to 1 and a half months so ideally a pre season for me would be anywhere between 2 weeks to 2 and a half weeks okay or on a lower uh, end start or lower end it could be anywhere between a week 7 days to 10 days right so that is when a either a new season is approaching or an important competition is approaching so that for us technically we'll take it as a definition for the pre season now what are the key uh, approaches that we need to have with regards to the pre season the first and the most important part is will be our practice methods right so we all do practice as a team we all do uh, uh, as individually we do a lot of things we work hard uh, uh, one once my trainer told me that champions are made in overtime right whatever field that you want to be it's not enough that if you're going to be part of a group session a classic example is school so it's just not enough if you're at school and you got to come back and you got to know it all you got to work extra you got to constantly keep pressing up so cricket is no exception it is a skill so the more we do the better we become and having said that just practice does not make a man or a woman perfect it's practice perfect practice that makes a man or a woman perfect so please pay due attention to the practice uh, sessions okay uh one aspect that i would again give my own personal bad experience or what i learned was i used to bat for 2 uh, hours 3 hours extra you know do some throw downs 
uh, do bowling machines, a whole bunch of get bowlers and keep batting like crazy. But at the end of the session, I was not feeling good. I was not feeling confident. Now you tell me, was there any purpose in my practice other than me wasting two hours? Because I came back with more doubts. I came back dissatisfied. I came back not with confidence. So that definitely didn't help me, you know, looking back. But believe me, it's all about quality practice. It's not quantity. So anytime you are in the practice with your team or individually or with a shorter group of friends, doing your throwdowns, doing your batting drills or doing your spot bowling, working on your variation or taking catches, you know, working on your sharpening your fielding skills and throws, the key for me is to ensure that you do it right and do, do it well and also ensure you feel good about it. Okay, that's the most important part. That's the point I was coming to. Okay, and uh, some of, again, let's bifurcate it into uh, the best practice methods for a bowler and best practice methods for a batter, right? For a batter, believe me, that 15 minutes, the 20 minutes or the 30 minutes that you get to play in the next, the actual bowlers, uh, my request would be, or my advice would be to treat it like a match scenario. Because remember, for a batter, you get one chance and the initial 15, 20 or 30 minutes in the match is the most critical part, right? So you have to build a good practice session, every practice session towards that initial phase of a match, initial phase of a competition, okay? So what can I do as a batter? When I, every time I go into nets, I look to middle the ball. Right? So a good defensive shot off the middle is confidence for the batter. It's a feel-good factor for the batter. So as a batter, ensure the moment you go into the nets, try to look to middle. So if you're starting to middle the ball, which more often than not indicates that you're moving right, your positions are right. Believe me, batting is not about hitting the ball. Batting is all about getting into the right positions. Hitting the ball is a result. That will happen. Happen when? When we do the process right, what is the process? Process is moving into the positions fast and moving into the correct positions. So as a batter, every time you get into the nets, especially prior to the season, like 10 days or a week before the season starts or a, a competition, ensure you start middling the ball, right? And look to play it like a match. There might be five bowlers bowling at you back to back, but nevertheless, Take your time and try to play one ball at a time, like how you would do in a match. Probably not doing the gardening or uh, your post-ball routine, but I would say still take a little bit of an extra time between the balls and ensure that you play one ball at a time. Okay. And another critical aspect, I've heard this from uh, top players like uh, Rahul Ravid, like Lakshman and all, they have this habit one week prior to the competition or 10 days, every time they go into the bag, they go into bat in the nets or practice, their sole motto is to come not out. You know why? Because so one week prior to the competition or 10 days prior to the competition, if I get out minimal times in the nets or if I don't get out at all, that assurance, that confidence I get going into the competition is definitely valuable because as a batsman, a lot of our decisions are subconscious, right? So the biggest enemy, again, for a batter, any batter in the initial phase is tentativeness, right? So you know all batters, whether it's Virat Kohli or Steve Smith, everybody is initially vulnerable. That's how batting goes. So you've got to ensure that by playing in the nets long, by playing not getting out in the nets or minimizing your dismissals, you build that feel-good factor into the competition, especially important for a batsman because at the back of the mind, if you haven't got out in the nets, you're going to be more sure about yourself. So if the more sure you are, the better you're going to move. The better you're going to move, the better you're going to hit the ball. You know, it's like a cycle. So that is why a week or 10 days prior to the competition or your season start, optimize your net time as a batter, look to play and not get out or minimize your dismissals. Because I've seen a lot of players saying that, oh, I play the T20 format, it's all slam bang and go get out every other ball in the nets. It's not going to help you to get out five, six times and then you're still smashing a few hits. It's not going to do you any good. Well, if you want to do some extra work on your drills, 
specific strokes or even slogging and smashing. Take time out and do it. Uh, not in the nets, but you know, take time out other than the nets. Nets, treat it like it's a game and the whole purpose of batting in the nets is to is for that initial phase. Okay. After 2030, believe me, you will even play the shots that you didn't play in the nets. That is what batting is all about. So please understand it's about middling the ball, playing one ball at a time, and reducing or minimizing or nullifying your dismissals. Now for a bowler, what could be uh, some of the practice methods first and foremost is getting your no balls intact you know whether you're a spinner whether you're a pacer you know in current cricket uh, it, it's going to prove you really costly every time you overstep right with the power plays in play uh, with the sorry uh, uh, super hit and all it's, it's, it's crazy so you have to ensure the first and foremost aspect for a bowler is to ensure that every time you bowl in the nets you don't cross the crease right a second thing is extras you know minimize just like how i say minimize getting out or nullify getting out minimize your no balls minimize your extras in the nets in your practice especially the pre-season during the pre-season which is technically a week or 10 days prior to the competition or season again it's a feel good factor and that is how you build your rhythm Okay, bowling is all about getting into rhythms. And the best part about bowling is if you have a bat first well, you can always come back, right? So ensure that you build your rhythm towards the season. The first part is the practice methods. So uh, have a partner, even if you are a bowler, you can have a partner who can keep for you or somebody who can fetch the balls for you. It always works to help to work with the partner or with a bunch of a smaller bunch who you are comfortable with in your team okay you can share ideas there's a lot that can be accomplished in a smaller group practice as well so again i emphasize champions are made in overtime spend as much time as you can other than your stipulated sessions team sessions i mean so the second aspect is uh, working on control see control is a very very critical component in cricket what differentiates cricket at the grassroots level and what uh, it is at the highest level, international level or the professional level. It's the same ball, it's the same leg break, it's the same flipper, it's the same in-swing, out-swing. But what is difference? The difference is the level of control that is being exhibited there. Okay, for all the younger ones who are watching this, I would like to say one step below, you need to start working. One step below to control is coordination, right? So what are we working on every time we practice? We are working on our coordination. So coordination efforts over a period of time is equal to control. Please remember this equation. So we are trying to build our coordination during the practice sessions, okay, by working on the coordinations who are semi-professionals, adult cricketers who have already been playing the sport for a long time. It's all about sustaining our control. So please don't fool around in the practice session. Make every practice session I would have seen this in winter. You just have a smaller arena where there's hardly any room. So you bowl three sets, 15 minutes to a batter, each batter. So that's 45 minutes. And assuming you get to bat uh, 15 minutes, it's just technically one hour in that session of three hours or two hours. So what do we do for the rest of the time? right you can probably take a partner get some catches uh, in the corner or just outside the building if possible and you know you can do your jump rope you can do your plants so there's always something that constructive that you can do so the appeal here is please ensure that you optimize your practice time make every session count okay make every ball count whether you're batting whether you're bowling or whether you're practicing your fielding skills so the first aspect was practice and then we discussed working on control. So coordinated efforts over time leads us to control. Uh, that's the second aspect in the pre-season approach. The third aspect, and for me, the most critical aspect in the pre-season approach is building confidence and momentum 
into the season into the competition you know that's absolutely critical because what are we all working for we're all working for that specific event that specific tournament or that specific season right and it's just not physically enhancing our skills it's all about feeling good i gave you an example earlier where i used to bat for long but then come back with doubts come back not happy come back not confident so the key of every practice session whatever you are working on in the pre season approach is to build our confidence and momentum for the season okay and another very very is physically yes we prepare to last the whole season however long however big how many ever matches that is but skill wise okay believe me skill wise and to get a start we are only looking at the initial few innings or the few games or the few matches okay it's not preparing for a whole season in that sense okay i'll give you an example so if you are a batter the first two or three innings or the first two or three matches that you play in a in a new competition or a new season if you manage a 50 if you manage a 30 if you are playing t excuse me t20 if you managed a 100 if you are playing a 50 overs game or, or uh, if you manage a double 100 if you are playing a days game three days game right so the first two or three innings if any of that uh, happens then you can cruise through the whole season with that confidence and momentum so in what are we trying to say here so don't think that you are working on your skills for the whole season it's for the initial phase of the season so similarly as a bowler you it's all about getting into right rhythm so the bowler the only thing is it's not necessary only wickets justify your uh, confidence and momentum okay sometimes it's it's the rhythm right that is important sometimes you will bowl badly you might still end up picking wickets but still your momentum and confidence will not be great so it's all about finding your rhythm as a bowler in the initial few games initial few innings initial few matches so please uh, understand that and with the help of that focus and with the help of doing well through the entire season right and uh, to the contrary of that is if we don't get off to a good start 3 to 4 innings then we all know that the pressure kind of uh, builds up on us okay so we will go to the next segment as we go to the next segment in season insights we will deal with how to handle when we don't have a great start okay that's again an important aspect we and hopefully make it work on the cricket field so with that we come to the end of the pre season approach again summing it up practice methods champions are made in overtime quality practice perfect practice over just practice make every ball count make every minute count in the practice work on your control if you are an adult cricketer if you are a youth cricketer work on your coordination all the times and start building confidence and momentum towards your season uh, towards your first few innings or towards the first few matches in the competition with that we come to the end of the pre season approach. thank you thank you very much sunil for providing your valuable insights interesting question by mr chandru uh, mr chandru is a semi professional uh -huh. player and he does not feel comfortable to okay. practice in the nets in the pre season so he doesn't know whether it's right is it the right way or a wrong way and is it right to to find his unique way to practice pre season absolutely absolutely there are no set rules and regulations or set patterns right so cricket is as much an individual sport as a team sport so what you can do for yourself also counts and ultimately it's only going to help the team so to answer to chandru's question yes some people feel claustrophobic in the nets you know they're not comfortable they're not comfortable with the five bowlers coming at them so some people like to do just drills throw downs which will keep them in good state okay so my request would be don't completely neglect the net part see if you can do some center wicket practice sessions right so ultimately it's important you face the bowlers from 22 yards get used to the ball coming from the distance different type of deliveries coming at you so yes if you are not comfortable with the proper net setup two options a you can reduce the bowler just have one bowler at a time let a pacer bowl six balls and then get a spinner to bowl at you for six balls just like how you get to do it in a game or option b 
go to the center pitch where you don't feel claustrophobic and you can get a real feel of it so just to add on to this part it's an interesting question for those of you who are coaches who have teams who run clubs and academies i would request prior to the season right please let ensure you give enough opportunities to your team and students to play a lot of practice games and to have a lot of center wicket practice sessions right because ultimately that's where cricket happens net is just to hone your skills right actual cricket happens in the middle in the center thank you sunil for answering i've got one more question from an amateur cricketer from st louis usa by the name mr tom shah mm -hmm. he is an amateur cricketer mm -hmm. he says what is a holistic balanced pre season approach mentally and physically for a club cricketer uh well as i said the mental aspect is always ongoing right so uh, in the uh, off season you think about uh, what all you did uh, what you could it and during the pre season approach as you go into the season the mental aspect is all about feeling good about your abilities all about feeling confident all about having the momentum with you all about believing in yourself right so it it's a complementary thing where the more you work physically the right things that you do you're going to get more confident and by thinking constantly about and feeling good after every session you build the feel good factor confidence and momentum which is required in this phase in this phase particularly as we approach the season thank you sir thank you and that will be it and we will move on to our next yeah can we proceed to the next segment bipin yes absolutely so thank you okay great thank you so well thank you for all the questions uh, uh, that's uh, that's coming in again i would like to emphasize if there are any specific uh, questions that you would like to uh, want us to give our insights please email us at info@cricketsocial.com and we assure you that we come back to you with some suggestion and solution okay so that brings us to the final aspect of our uh, discussions this evening which is the in season insights so the in season which is what we are all uh, working for we are all preparing for right so the in season i mean a season just about to start in a day or two or it is just commence okay so that that's the phase that we are in uh it is uh, a very exciting phase yes all of us will have butterflies in the stomach all of us will have that kind of doubts you know how is it going to pay out to me as an individual how is it going to be for the team as a group as a bunch so for all the coaches club owners team owners so uh, it, it, this is the most exciting part and this is what we are all working hard for okay this is the ultimate uh, event uh, as we if we can call that uh, for which we are working hard uh, in the past two phases so the first aspect of this approach this uh, in season insight uh, is defined as game dynamics okay so game dynamics will for all of us you know individually cricket is a journey right the learning never stops not at my age probably not at someone older than me and if you ask sachin tendulkar today i'm sure he would say even after retired he's constantly learning so much about the game so whatever we've done in the past like you know our journey as a player our journey as a captain our journey as a coach our journey as a selector the more games we watch we kind of understand some game dynamics so whatever i could infer i'm willing to share here so whenever you get a chance to speak to a a, a player or a, a coach or someone who has been associated with cricket for a long time please try and probe on their game dynamics because it's smartness to learn from their experience we don't have to wait for us to get experience all the while okay the first yeah, aspect i would explain it very simply again with a batting perspective and the bowling perspective okay so from a batting perspective so assuming you are part of the team and you have five batters in the team okay and for uh, we have five kohlis all five batters are virat kohlis okay so if you look at it that way the batting dynamics how it works by and large in a cricket game is even if you have five virat kohlis not all five virat kohlis will come good on a particular day or very rarely will all virat kohlis uh, score 50s and uh, the score becomes 250 right so how does the game usually work in batting what are the dynamics 
So it's usually one or two Virat Kohlis, you know, getting who get going on that particular day. Like somebody gets a hundred or a fifty or sixty, or just one person gets a hundred, and then everybody else, the rest of the four or three Virat Kohlis, revolve around that one Virat Kohli. Okay. So for all the youth watching here, whenever you get a chance, whenever you get in, whenever you cross that fifty twenty run barrier, believe me. It's all the more important that you take the team through. Whether you're batting first, try to bat long. Whether you're chasing, take the team through all the way. Okay, that's very very important because not all Virat Kohlis are going to fire on the same day. Okay, remember that. And in a limited over scenario, uh, another batting dynamic would be the top four of the batters. You know, the openers one two and number three one down and number four two down. Whether you are playing a T20, whether you are playing a 25 overs game, whether you are playing a 30 overs game, or whether you are playing a 50 overs game, the batting dynamic is the top four batters have to bat. One of the top four batters have to bat long, like you know, until the 45th over if it's a 50 overs game, or typically the entire T20, 20 overs format, or the entire 30 overs. You know why? Because that helps in. uh everybody else revolving around you and the team posting a good score or a team chasing down a target right so remember this once you're set you have to make it count and the top four have a additional responsibility to ensure that they go all the way and bat deep bat long especially in a limited overs game okay so let's look at the uh, uh, bowling aspect the dynamics would be so assuming you have uh, five bowlers for the day all five bowlers are dale stains right believe me one or two dale stains will get hit that particular day right so one amongst the one or two will probably not be in his element will not have his rhythm he might be probably overstepping or he might be doing extras wide that is how the game goes right that is again a bowling game dynamic please remember this so especially if you are a captain if you are a coach or even if you are a player if you are not if you have five day stains also not all of them are going to fire again the onus is on the one or the two or the three day stains who are their rhythm that day who are started doing the job well to take the team through again bowlers have two jobs batting is about partnership and i would say so is bowling so in bowling the two dale stains one of the dale stains job that particular day would be only to restrict build the pressure the other person's other dale stains responsibility could be to pick up the wickets right so this is a very important bowling dynamic where if you have five bowlers one or two will definitely get hit on a particular day and if you are bowling think about partnership so if your job if your uh, partner at the other end is taking up wickets your job is to ensure you build the pressure from your end enabling him to get wickets and sometimes or the next game going forward the roles will reverse where your partner needs to realize the same and he does the job of restricting keeping the pressure on one end and you do the job of picking up wickets right so please understand this uh, game dynamics as a batter as a bowler with regards to the team you know that is how it works very rarely all five bowlers have a field day very rarely all five batters will have a field day so those who get going please become aware of it that yes today is my day and i am going to make it happen okay and having said that if you're batting a number 5 at number 6 say if you're playing a days game the score reach 30 for 4 and 30 for 5 the game dynamic for you is different now okay you can look at it two ways one oh jeez i'm going to be in trouble that's one way of looking at it or the other way and the most appropriate way to look at it is okay today is my opportunity to contribute for my team today is my opportunity to get a big score otherwise batting at 5 6 i don't get to score 100 now the score reaches 10 for 3 or 20 for 4 that is when it's my opportunity so that's again a interesting dynamic an interesting way to go and look at it right and as a bowler you might come in with a tremendous pressure so the six overs score would reach 50 and you will be asked to bowl one change so again the interesting dynamic is oh god i'm going to get clobbered is one aspect 
or saying, you know what, probably I'm going to do the change. I'm going to uh, ensure that I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to do the job today for the team. Approach it that way. Okay, it's always good to start on a positive note, whatever may be the situation. That's with regards to the game dynamics and the team uh, with regards to the team uh, proposition. Now let's go to the next aspect, which is game awareness. Okay, this game awareness is more individualistic. Again, for uh, easier understanding, we can divide it for from a batter, batter's perspective and a bowler's perspective, the game awareness. So let me start with the batter. So you're a number four batter of the team. Your team's batting, you're batted up. What are the things that you need to be aware of? You know, even before you go into the, uh, uh, go out to bat. So uh, small things like, you know, which way is the wind going? So whenever you want, you should be aware which way the wind's going for two reasons. A, when the spinner is bowling, is the ball going to dip or is the ball going to come to me? And is it a good idea for me to go with the wind when I'm lofting? Similarly, when I'm going to take a second run, when I'm going to risk a second run, it obviously it's better off I risk from the end where the thrower is going to throw against the wind, right? A small example. Seated, I'm not saying don't be very serious, I'm saying have fun with your uh, friends in the pavilion, in the dugout, but always be aware what's happening on the field. Okay, so who is a good fielder in the team? Who's a left arm thrower? Is the guy at short mid wicket short squad a left arm thrower? Because if I try to sneak a single, he has a direct view of the non strikers end and I'll be in trouble, I'll be at more risk, right? Or someone standing in the boundary line who cannot throw very hard, very accurately, so you know, okay, I can take a chance with that specific fielder, right? These are small things that you need to be extremely aware and this can really help us. This can be a game changer sometimes, okay? Uh, another game awareness, uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, batter, like I would be playing, I would be the one of the batters and if the new batter comes in, he will ask me, hey, you know, what do you think is the wicket? What do you think is the bowler doing? I would suggest to uh, don't confuse the uh, new batter with a lot of your theories because everything is a relative concept. Okay, for all of you, even uh, semi-professionals or professionals or youth cricketers, please understand what is fast for you can be slow for the other person and the vice versa, right? So I would say if you are a batter, try to observe. You know, I used to do this practice uh, whenever the dressing room or the dugout was in the cover and mid region, I would take a chair, I would go and sit beside the side screen, you know, by the side, so I get a better front view and I know what is happening. I know if a bowler is bowling quick. I know if a bowler is bowling in swing or out swing, at least for a little bit. So that will give me better awareness. And I would request all batters to go take few minutes, few balls to understand what's going on, right? Rather than hearing out from someone, the batsman who got out would say he's bowling quick, but you know, he might not be all that quick for you. So there is a probability, a short probability, a small probability of you getting misled. So I would suggest, yes, hear out from him, but don't immediately jump to conclusions. Whatever is being said to you, sometimes even a coach is saying you something, just go try it out, have some self-intelligence, apply some self-intelligence and then figure it out. Okay, that's where I'm coming to. So this game awareness is extremely critical for a batter. So some of the examples we discussed, what would be the points of game awareness for a bowler? Okay, simple thing, you've, you've bowled one over, you're standing at the third man or fine leg. Uh, I see more often than not, like you're completely cut off from the game. Yes, you need to relax during the spell, but you've got to constantly be observing the batter. Okay, in simple words, a batter can be bracketed into four categories. Okay, someone who is very strong on the front foot and on the offside, Someone who's very strong on the back foot and on the offside. Someone who's very strong on the front foot on the onside. Someone who's very strong on the back foot on the onside. So be smart in observing his stance, his grip, you know, what is he strong at. And you can kind of keep bracketing the batsman so you know, okay, this batsman, for example, Rohit Sharma, the bowlers dare not pitch shot to him. He's so good on the short balls, right? He'll pull you, hook you out of the park. So you have to be aware, you can't bowl a short ball, get hit for a four and six and then understand, oh, this batter is strong. No. Yes, sometimes that also happens when you're absolutely not uh, sure who the batter is. But whenever you are 
seeing a, a batsman, whenever a new batsman is at the crease, even when you have finished your spell, please observe as a bowler, as a spinner, as a, a pacer, whatever you are. Right? Understand what is he good at, what is he looking to do. And your job is to not give what he is good at. Right? Choke him what he is not good at. So the quicker you learn, the quicker you understand that, the better for you. And how will that happen? It will happen through the game of awareness. Right? So that's with regards to the batter and the uh, bowler's perspective on uh, the game of uh, the game awareness. And I would always say this, become aware and have a plan, right? It doesn't guarantee success, but however, uh, my philosophy is uh, if we fail, at least fail with the plan. So, you know, that's not working and you can jump on to something else. Okay. So, again, this awareness also is a journey. Keep learning, keep learning, keep building your awareness. You know, whatever game, whatever grade, whatever level you're playing. So that comes uh, the third and the final part of the in-season insight. Very critical uh, component, I would say, is uh, handling pressure, handling situational pressure. So for all of you who are watching, not only cricket, any sport, please understand and realize pressure is inevitable. Okay? In sports, especially in cricket, you will have special pressure situations. We got to deal with it. We got to handle it. There is no escaping. All right. So let's look at some of the uh, uh, ways in which how we can handle pressure. Okay. So one simple way, uh, according to me, is using the breath. Okay. So again, let's for convenience sake split it up into the batsman's perspective and the bowler's perspective. You know, what can we do on the field? We can try and relate. And how can we handle the situation pressure? So you're batting and then it's a close game. Or you're chasing a target or you're under tremendous pressure with uh, a lot of wickets falling. What can we do? Become aware of one thing. The moment we feel the pressure, the moment we uh, kind of feel nervous, what happens is our body becomes slightly rigid. You know, it tightens up without our awareness. And how, that's, that's the first point. And how can we break that? How can we manage that? It's through the breath. Okay. So you would have seen uh, a lot of times batters doing this, you know, with the back handle. What are they trying to do? Yes, it becomes a habit after a time, but there is a purpose to it. What are they trying to do? They're trying to relax their hands. Like, you know, the, the palms on the bat, your elbows, your wrist, your shoulders. Because once they become rigid, the flow is not going to be good. And if the flow is not going to be good, we all know we're not going to time and we're not going to hit the ball well. Right? So you see a lot of them taking deep breaths and then doing this and then moving their arms, body. So whenever you're in a pressure situation as a batter, please ensure that you use your breath. So before I come into bat, I can take a nice, nice deep breath in and out. Okay, that's one way of calming ourselves down and then get our body to move so that they're not overly rigid and tight. That's one aspect. Another aspect that you can try is, you would have seen on TV, a lot of the batters, when they get on to their stance, they you see a lip movement, right? So it's called the pre-ball routine. So a lot of the batters would say one word, it can be come on, it can be good, it can be ball. So it's kind of a trigger movement, right? So again, for a batter, you might ask, why do we need to breathe and calm ourselves down? And you know, what's the use? As a batter, more often than not, our decisions are involuntary, right? We, we do it subconsciously. So the thought, the science is, if you are calm and composed, your decisions will be more often than not right, rather than you become, you being jittery and restless, okay? So as a batter, Try to use your breath and then move your hands, your body, relax yourself and you can have a pre-ball routine like one word, come on, and then get into your stance, okay? In the non-strikers then, what we can again do to keep ourselves uh, 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 calm under the situational pressure, uh, please don't do this in the strikers then, never close your eyes in the strikers then because it gets dark. So when you're in the non-strike, you know for a fact that you're not going to immediately bat the next ball. 
you can still keep your eyes closed and take a couple of deep breaths in and out that can kind of calm our nerves okay and uh, we would have heard a lot of stories about sevak uh, whistling and uh, singing in the non strikers end so whenever he was uh, under some kind of pressure right and uh, whenever two batters meet i believe sachin and sevak have told this uh, uh, in some of the chat shows that uh, they used to take their mind off by talking something irrelevant to the game just for a few seconds so they kind of calm their nerves so there are a whole bunch of ways that we can handle situational pressure using our breath you know using our, our body movements to relax and using a pre ball routine or keeping our eyes closed is uh, definitely a uh, viable options that you can explore again with regards to the bowler what can we do as a bowler so you bowl a delivery you get clobbered for a six six and then you come back you don't think you bowl and then you get clobbered for a four we we just blank right we we don't know what to do so what are the things that we can try to handle that situational pressure so whether you are a spinner or a fast bowler once the ball is dead you are walking back to your run up take long deep breaths in okay and once you get to your run up uh, before turning around to the batter look at the side screen you can keep your eyes closed and take a couple of breaths in and out and as you turn before you start your ball please have a plan okay so this ball i'm trying to i'm going to bowl a uh, fourth stem i'm going to slightly swing the ball you know have a plan right so use your breath try closing the eyes before you uh, turn around and have a plan before the next delivery so these are things that you can try as a bowler for handling situational pressure and sometimes the pressure uh, or the situational uh, disturbance is not during it's not due to what is actually happening on the field it might be a lot of occasions what is happening in the head you know we call this the monkey in the mind right so suppose you are batting again batting and bowling example you are batting and then you are having this uh, urge to step down and smack okay what do i do so please understand at the realm of the mind anything you resist will always persist okay so if you say don't do don't do don't do don't no 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 you will invariably end up doing it okay so what is the right way to deal with it you got to be smart in tricking the mind you got to be smart in diverting the mind so one example suppose you have this constant idea of okay i have to smash him i have to smash him a predetermined thought okay if the ball is meant to be smashed you will smash eventually i'm not stopping that so the predetermination or the monkey the chatter in the uh, mind how can we handle it is we can postpone that thoughts okay you can say you know what okay i will try and smash it after two overs so this is a smart way you've got to trick the mind postpone the thoughts so that you're not resisting nor are we building on it okay that's a small and interesting way to try and postpone the thought saying okay i'm going to smack him after two overs to so postpone the thought and the monkey in the mind i'm sure will calm down a bit okay the same thing with the bowler you'd be so resisting okay i need to get the flipper or i need to get the arm ball or i need to get the googly or i need to get the slower and you'd be sometimes like you know it'll be hitting you the thoughts so again trick it and say okay let me do it after let me do the next over so then you get on with that one ball you have a plan in your mind and then try and come and execute okay so these are uh, some small but significant ways of handling situational pressure so uh, to sum up the in season insights the game dynamics remember the six colies or five colies or the five dail stains okay and then the top four batting through the bowling partnerships right and then the game awareness about who is a good fielder as a batter what are the things that you need to be aware of in the day of the match or during the competition or the game and the handling situational pressure using our breath so sometimes keeping our eyes closed sometimes even whistling or singing a song relaxing yourself and then sometimes uh, using a pre ball routine okay or using uh, relaxing your uh, hands and the body so all these are uh, uh ways and means that we can try and calm ourselves why because a lot of the decisions we take are uh, subconscious and involuntary in the sport and once we are calm and composed the probability of uh, taking the right decision is enhanced okay with that uh, uh, we come to the end of uh, the third segment and the final segment 
and uh, I'm ready to take on some questions, Vipin, if you are available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunil, for explaining things in detail. I've got about four or five questions, all pertaining to one subject. How do you handle failure? How do you tackle mid mid season crisis? If I'm not doing well, should I go ahead? Should I brave it? I go ahead, or should I take a break? Please. Okay, uh, this is something which we all have gone through. Uh, I'm sure Vipin, uh, being a first class cricketer himself and a coach, he would have felt it individually as well as the teams that we manage. Uh, sometimes it's like failure is integral in any walk in life, right? So we can't escape failure. Uh, but here's the way I look at it. There will be certain things that which are in our control. Okay, Th those are the areas that we need to focus, I will elaborate it. And the things that are not in our control, we definitely need to ignore. And first and foremost, when we are going through a slum, we will get confused, okay? What is form? Form is a mental state of mind. You're in good form means you're in a good state of mind. You're not in good form means you're not in a good state of mind. We all go through bad seasons or bad series. So I would tell you uh, my own, again, personal example. One season, uh, I, I'm playing Premier Division in Chennai, which is about 11 three-day games, okay? Uh, and uh, one whole season, I only managed 115 runs for the entire season. I would have probably batted 12 or 13 seasons, uh, innings. And uh, uh, believe me, as it would uh, be, the next season, the first game, I got a double hundred. So way more than the entire season last year, right? So, again, this is a journey. We will have failures. What are the things that we can do is, A, don't get confused with too many opinions coming your way, especially when you're not in the best nick, okay? I'm not saying turn a, a deaf a ear to every advice that's coming your way. Take it, filter it, process it, try it, and then if it works, implement. Okay, that is what I would recommend. And uh, another thing I can uh, request you all to try is, so you're playing at a certain grade, okay, and you're not in the best of the forms or nicks, just like how they say for an international player, right? If you're not in great nick at the international level, they ask you to go play first class and, you know, get some runs or wickets under your belt. And I'm sure that the player, once he comes back, he's going to be his good self or even better. So uh, same funda, same logic. Try and see if you can play some uh, lower grade. I mean, I'm not demeaning any grade here, just to the level that you're playing, Try and see if you can play a couple of friendly games, a couple of uh, practice games or, you know, a couple of, uh, uh, say, for example, you're playing league, then you can go and try uh, play a private league or a private tournament. So see if that helps. That is definitely one way of uh, looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, uh, yes, don't get overtly confused, overtly pressured. But every new inning you go, you've got to believe that, yes, this, I'm, this is going to be my game. You know, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do well. If you're a batter, believe me, your form is just one shot away. You know, that one timing, one good four, one cover drive that you used to be good at or one pull that you're good at, that's going to come back, that's going to get back the whole good feeling and it's going to change the confidence and momentum, okay? One thing is you've got to be really, really strong. Uh, cricket, career, the graph is pretty much like this. You'll have some great days, you will have some horrible days. So my uh, request again would be the 12 o'clock rule. Okay, my coach used to tell me this, suggest me this, that, uh, uh, you know, if I get, if it did well, I need to celebrate it only until 12 o'clock of that midnight because 12.01, it's a new day and I have to start from zero, me being a batter. Similarly, even if you have a bad day, if you got a duck, the duck is only until 12 o'clock. So if you want to feel sad, if you want to feel bad, it's only until 12 o'clock because 12.01, it's a new day. It's a fresh day. You need to have the hope. You need to have the belief, right? That I'm going to overcome. Thank you, Sunil. Great talk. So we don't have any more questions. So I will, we will, I'll go into wrapping it up. Yep. Uh, I would like to say just a couple of things, uh, Vipin, as I finish and then it, you can probably take it for, forward from there. So yes. I would like to say two things for uh, all the cricketers out here, whatever level you're playing. Uh, in the path to excellence, right, it's a journey. Okay, the learning is 
ever ongoing and there are no excuses. So uh, there's no point blaming somebody else. Uh, even as a team, please don't blame ABC in the team. Take credit, take, uh, 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 you know, defeats collectively. Okay, the path to excellence, there are no excuses. And a good attitude, preparation and passion can cover up a little bit of uh, ability, lack of ability. Okay, you might not be the most talented person. On that note, a lot of kids think that I need to have all the shots in the book. I need to be technically perfect. No, sorry. If I'm a bowler, I need to have all the tricks in the bowling. No, you need not have to be. And believe me, 100% uh, technically acute or having all the shots or all the variations is a myth. It does not, it is, it, it is not to be seen in the real world. Okay. So attitude, preparation, and passion can definitely cover up for a little bit of lack of ability, okay? And please give yourself this thought that I'm going to give my 100% every time for every ball, be it in a competition, be it in a practice game, or be it in a practice session. So it's nets, it's 100% every time, every ball. That's the motto. And enjoy your ride, enjoy your journey as a cricketer. Thank you for the opportunity. Wow, Sunil. Thank you very much for the talk. That was a fantastic webinar for the insights on preparation and approach. It has really opened a thing or two in my brain and I hope that's the same with all the attendees. I would personally like to hear from you about your experience about this webinar. What is your takeaway from this webinar and how are you going to use these tools to help yourself and others to make the coming season a more productive one? Please feel free to email us on info at cricketsocial.com for more insights and updates about the future chat series, episodes and guest speakers. Please follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. We really appreciate your, your time and undivided attention. See you all shortly in yet another episode of the Cricket Social Chat series, episode number two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.